example, this is the floating oil production vessel Petra Yarl. What makes Petra Yarl unusual is the combination of its being a ship and an oil production vessel. She has a complete uh, production plant producing uh, up to 40,000 barrels of oil and uh, also injecting gas lift, all facilities needed for uh, production. And we produce the oil and we, we store the oil in the, in the storage tank in the hull. Production goes on day and night. The teams on board separated into two 12-hour shifts. Yes, we're on two shifts on board. There's the day shift, which goes from 6 in the morning till 6 at night, and then the other one carries on from 6 in the evening around to 6 in the morning again. The main activities here are a little different from other offshore production installations. On the rigger, a roustabout, I'll do lots of things. Routine maintenance up on the heli deck, drive the crane, a whole variety of jobs, really. I'm the works foreman. I'm bosun on board. I'm in charge of deck maintenance, lifeboats, the heli deck, and other routine jobs. Well, on shore, I was a carpenter, but I came on board here as a painter. Now I work as a rigger. For me, it's very exciting. I mean, you take part in lots of things, like when the helicopter or the tanker or supply boat arrive. The rest of the time, there are set jobs, like maintenance and painting. We take out all the water and uh, we take off, off the gas. My particular job is to, to keep an eye on the process uh, systems from, from the uh, subsea trees and uh, through the production line into the cargo tank. So checking all the levels, pressures and uh, flow rates, that everything is within uh, the, the limits we have. This is the center of the ship. Here we make the electricity. We use the gas turbine to do the generators, each on 2,800 kilowatts. And the gas is uh, separating the process area from the oil you're taking off from the seabed. Pull up the hook and pull up the mains. Nor is the normal routine of travel to and from the vessel any different. Heliport check-in, safety briefing and helicopter travel are just the same as if going to a fixed platform. What makes Petriol different is that there are no seabed pipelines to take the oil to shore. And that means work routines are different. Oil that's produced is initially stored on board. Then every four days, a shuttle tanker arrives to take off the oil and deliver it to oil refineries. Offloading is a period of intense activity. In the center of the vessel, and central to oil production, is the turret. Beneath here are the pipelines carrying the oil and gas from the subsea oil reservoir. The turret itself is tethered to the seabed. As Petrial is able to turn 360 degrees around the turret, the vessel is made to face into the wind and keep motion felt on board to a minimum. And as only the turret is fixed to the seabed, what is it that keeps Petrial in place? Petrial is kept in this place by means of the thrusters and the propellers, which are controlled by the position mooring system. The position mooring system reads position reference is from satellites and it reads compasses and computes uh, signals for the thrusters. In, in very stormy weather we will move a couple of meters in any direction and possibly a couple of degrees of heading, but the thrusters will be used to counteract any environmental forces like the, weather, the wind, the waves, to maintain the wanted position and heading. Keeping the vessel operating safely under bad weather is one of the challenges, I would say. In the worst uh, winter storms, we have to stop producing oil and just wait on the weather. I've seen glass balls sliding up tables and things like that. It doesn't affect me life, it affects the work. Looking after all the domestic arrangements on board is a team of stewards and stewardesses who do the cleaning and washing and keep the accommodation in order. I work on here two weeks on and two weeks off. I have this level to do and I have the next level to do. And there's 14 cabins on each floor. 
so the top deck here, the officer deck, is single cabins. And the deck below, the boat deck, it is two man cabins. D shift and night. The facilities here is very good. Uh, probably the best facilities I've ever worked with offshore. Yeah, the. Uh, you are not allowed to have beer on board. You can have tobacco, of course, and you can smoke in certain areas, like the day room or the coffee bar, but beer and spirits, no. There's none of that on board. It's just not allowed. We've got quite a lot of televisions and videos. We've got two lounges, cinema. We've got the gym, which is a very good gym. We've got sauna. We've got the sunbed, as you can see. And we've got table terrace and plenty of videos, lots of videos on board. So there's a lot to do. When you've been working a 12-hour shift, you don't have a lot of energy left over for any exercise. It's mainly the video or the television, and then all you want to do is go to bed for eight or ten hours. Together with the same people and many years, and there's not very lot of people here. So we are maybe just 40, 45 people on board. So uh, we get to know each other quite well, and uh, the social part is very good here. Oh, the spirit is good, and... Uh not a good guys to work with. I think you have to to think about it as your home and your working place. And uh, you are a big family. You are taking care of each other and uh, try to live as normal as possible. Good job here on this ship. It's a very good crew, and uh, the maintenance on the ship is ship shape. I like this boat.